Hi, Phil Aston here from Now Spinning Magazine with an absolutely progtastic unboxing video for you in this specific episode. And it is the Van de Graaff Generator, the Charisma Years, a 20 disc, 17 CD and three Blu-ray discs overview of their whole career, an absolutely enormous box. And it's made me realize some of you will think, oh, I've got, I've got all their stuff. Do I really need this box? But some of you will think, oh, I haven't really got much by them, but I've heard of them. And I think that is the thing about there was so much music in the 70s, whether it was Purple Zeppelin or Sabbath, and then there was, yes, Genesis, Floyd, and then Wishbone Ash, Jethro Tall, King Crimson, G uh, Gentle Giant. Um, there was, there was, I could just keep going, couldn't I? I would never get onto the video. <laughs> but there was so much music. And when we think of like, progressive rock bands we think of the top layer yes genesis floyd and then the next level down where it became more deep darker king crimson and gentle giant more complicated and these guys were in amongst all of that the key difference i feel is that when punk arrived in 1977 and all this other stuff was seen like dinosaurs and overcomplicated. It was washed away with their songs about pixies and, and aliens and, and whatever. Van de Graaff Generator were actually one of John Lydon from the Sex Pistols' favourite bands. And Pete Hamill was one of his favourite vocalists. And you think, well, how, how, how is this the case? And also, why, after all these years, does Van de Graaff Generator's music still resonate so much? And I, and I think it's because they didn't listen to anyone else. They weren't interested in what any of their competitors were doing, or rival bands rather. They just did what they did. And so no one sounded anything like them. And the sounds they made were so unusual and, and scary in places and almost punkish in places and how they changed in their direction. You can see why this was the case. And I just didn't... I, this was a band that I missed out on the first time round because I was so guitar driven that when anyone played me any Van de Graaff generator, I was thinking, where are the guitars? I, I, so I kind of, and it was quite complex music. But anyway, I've just started to explore this and my God, what have I been missing out on? This is one hell of a box. Anyway, so enough of me at this point. So let's have a look inside. Now, as I said, I'd only got three of their albums prior to buying this, which was H to He, who the, the only one, and Porn Hearts and God Bluff. And one of the first things I always check when I do this is the bonus tracks on the, these discs. Are they on the box set? Or is it one of these cases where, yet again, you end up having to having multiple copies? And at first, I couldn't see them, but they are all included, but not necessarily on the discs you would think. So this is a box that's very similar to design to the Tangerine Dream box and also the John Martin box uh, and also Alex Harvey and Steve Hackett. So we'll have a look at the discs first of all. These are in fold out gatefold sleeves. I've taken out the second one first here. So you've got, um, they're in small little pockets, which I think some people might worry about scratching the discs, but I don't think that will be the case. The Blu-rays, though, are in little little sleeves as well, as you can see here. So I'll go through what these are overall. But basically, they're the 5.1 uh, mixes, surround sound mixes, new stereo mix for some albums, and also the original mix. So that's, and you've also got a Blu-ray of the videos as well. But I'll show you that when we go through the book. So that's the first one, and the... The other one is disc 1 to 12. This folds out into a three panel vinyl size set, as you can see here, containing all the discs from 8 to 12. Also inside is a small fold out of the master tapes. So you can see photographs of H to He, Who Am the Only One, and Porn Hearts, God Bluff, Still Life. World Record, The Quiet Zone, Vital, The Pleasure Dome, etc. And then we have the book. Now the book is huge and extensive. So I hope you can see this as I go through it. So as you open up, it's a hardback book, 
and the first thing you see is all these wonderful little clippings from all the Melody Maker enemy and sounds in Record Mirror will, some of us will remember from the day. You've got the credits here. Um, the fact is that 24-bit digital mastering by Ben Wiseman and uh, 5 point sound sound mixes by Stephen W. Taylor. The whole band have been involved. And the first part you've got here is showing, he's telling you all the track listings. So disc one, disc two, Porn Hearts. I've also got disc four is the Porn Hearts sessions where some of the bonus tracks from the original CDs have gone to. God Bluff, Live in Rimini, Still Life, World Record, Live at the Medicine Delivium in Paris, Quiet Zone, Pleasure Dome, Vital, H to He, which is the remix, Porn Hearts, Remix, God Bluff Remix, Still Life Remix, and the Blu-ray discs, which include absolutely everything. The booklet goes through the whole history of the band. I found this a really interesting read, and I haven't finished reading it. I've only just received this, and I haven't played all the discs either. The only album, some of you might be thinking, where is the Aerosol Grey Machine? That was done before they signed to Charisma. The whole history of that album is in here, but the album itself isn't. But many people don't class that really as the first Fandograph Generator album anyway. The first one, of course, is the least we can do is wave to each other. Um, which, of course, this is the one I have played. I played it this morning. And I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I, I absolutely loved it. And the, the sound quality, it's just timeless. It really is. And this, they don't um, skimp over any album here. You've got all the artwork um, represented. The whole band have been involved. Uh, lots of rare photographs. Lots of clippings. Uh, really, really well put together. There it is, Porn Hearts. It's probably it's one of the albums I'd already got, but my God, is it? It's fant It's absolutely amazing. And I think um, one of the great things about this band was the was the song titles. Great live, great live um, photos as well from when they first they kind of split up around this time and they reformed in '75 because um, of pressures and how they were worked by the label. You can see here Peter Hamill starts playing electric guitar up to this point he'd been it's strange he hadn't he didn't really have the confidence to play guitar because he was surrounded by such master musicians uh, um, so I think that's probably why you had all so many so much keyboards and brass work but it starts to change around here and the, and the music becomes more brutal as well so you can actually see why um, John Lydon actually liked this band and didn't see them as dinosaurs like a lot of other prog bands were seen. Uh, in fact, in 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 the booklet, it, Peter Howell talks about how how he actually embraced punk when he first started to realise it was coming along. So it, this really is a fantastic book. It really is great. Absolutely, so much to read here and to just sit and enjoy and immerse yourself as you play the music. Absolutely fantastic. Really pleased. And then it ends how it starts. Um, with lots of clippings from the press, etc. And the back of the box is, gives you the whole track listing of all the discs inside. And I just, I was intrigued by the song titles. That's what drew me in originally. You know, what would Robert have said? Um, the Emperor in his war room. Um, Plague of Lighthouse Keepers, which has got to be one of the best um, Brock tracks of all time. Um, so that's Fandograph Generator. I've not played all the discs. I've only played a couple and so far I am blown away. So thank you for watching this, the Fandograph Generator, the Charisma Years unboxing video. I am so enjoying this. There is so much to explore here and I, I, I am just, it just sounds fantastic. I've got, as I said, only three CDs which were remasters, but this is just exceptional and um, it's well worth the money. It's been put together with love and care and I'm absolutely loving it. So thank you for watching and please get in touch if you'd like me to cover anything else. I really appreciate your support and, your, and thank you to all my patrons and subscribers and I shall see you on my next video.